Hi, Hannah here. This is a mid-century modern piece. I believe it's mid-century modern that I got off of Craigslist for free. I'm going to restore it, even though it is in good condition. Um, what you see here is actually not the beginning of my journey to fix this piece. I actually kept this piece on the porch, and then when my boyfriend moved it, the leg broke. So this is actually the beginning weeks ago doing a few repairs before I even start the piece so I have basically have everything I need I have the wood glue I have some bondo and I have some um, clips to keep it down and I actually was working on something else well two other things on my prior weeks but I said I should start this I shouldn't just let it sit there broken. I could start some of these repairs and then get back to it when I'm ready for it. So I am very happy that I did that. So I'm just gluing just the outs, the inside of it. I looked at the piece and I studied where it was broken and what needed to be fixed. So it is a little awkward at first trying to get all the pieces together to repair it. But I knew it was, hmm. I just want you to see it even though it was a little weird for me. So now I'm trying to figure out where to put the clamps at to make sure the piece holds in place. So I got everything held in place, but I decided this was a good time to add the Bondo. I guess I could have waited till that dried, but I figured they can dry all together. So I slipped Bondo. <clears throat> which is basically used as a, a filler and it hardens um, on different pieces. The directions is pretty easy. It is a very strong smell. That's why I do wear a, a mask for Bondo. And so this is how the piece sat for about two weeks. I wasn't ready for it, so it sat for a while. And so about a few days before I started the actual project, I decided to put the leg back on. It just made sense to go ahead on and get that on. And so I had to sand off the Bondo and um, get it smooth. And so I'm just kind of testing out <clears throat> how it would slide in. Does it fit in? Because I didn't even know if it fit in right. So it's fitting in right. And I just want to clear the way. Make sure it uh, adhere. Shocking enough, the only thing that was holding these legs down in this particular spot was glue. So I glued the area that was already glued. It wasn't a bunch of glue on there, but I just glued right where it needed to be. Maybe I should have put it more, but that's what I did. So I got my little clamps to hold it in place. 
I'm literally going to start this piece probably in about four days. So I figured, let me just put this together. I just decided to go down there at night and put it together. And then I add more clamps to make sure there was no gap in between. And that is how it stayed. Until, yes, I'm finally ready to start this project. I put it on its feet. And now I'm taking the handles off and just giving it more of an examination. I did look at it, but, you know, I'm looking at it some more. And I want to clean these handles off and just get it to whatever original beauty it had. It may be a little less orange, but yes. I originally thought there could have been veneer on this piece. So I was starting with um, a 100 CM pad that was already kind of used. So it made it a little bit weaker. And that's what I wanted. I didn't want to sand too hard at first. I just wanted to kind of have the wood pop through here and there and see how that go. And then I quickly noticed that it was 100% wood, which leaves me puzzled. <coughs> this leaves me puzzled at what the piece really is. Like, it has the shape of a mid-century modern piece. But um, I will go on about the handles when it's time for me to do the handles. Because I really trying to figure out what this piece was. I went online. It would have been nice to have more um, details about exactly when this dresser was made. And just more information. I was being extra gentle sanding at the time because at this time I just wanted to be careful but I did sand a little bit harder later when I realized that the piece can take it. <laughs> So with the handles, I decided to soak them in white vinegar with some hot water. I really wish I had a pot for boiling them. I do have a friend that's going to give me a pot because I didn't want to sacrifice any of my pots. I thought that would have really made a difference that I was able to boil the handles the way I did see it as some examples I saw on, um, on YouTube. They were 
actually boiling the handles. I am using Barkeeper's Friend to scrub them with a toothbrush. And even though it was sort of effective, I'm going to tell you, I didn't get the results that I wanted. But this is the first time ever that I actually made a serious effort to try to get handles to the original look. I usually try a little bit and then I'm like, uh, this isn't going to work. So I really tried soaking things for hours, scrubbing things. I made a paste with the barkeeper's friend. And I really wanted to keep it as original as possible because I was reading the back of the handles to try to get an idea where they came from. And it was Keeler Bro, Keeler Bro Rapids. And I'm like, I don't know who that was, but I was trying to figure out who that was. Now you can see the handles didn't come out perfectly. It's like a little bit of a copper kind of look and then it still had like a metal look so you know I'm going to do something with them this I got from Home Depot um the Waco it's like an oil stain and I thought that would be nice um it's flagstone colors so I thought it would give it um take away some of the orange and give it more of um a more I love driftwood color. I'm just going to say that. And I thought that this color, according to the picture on the, on the, um, on the bottle, on the thing, on the can, I thought it would be that color. And it told me to pour it directly on it and just start rubbing it in. They did tell me to, just to try it out in a little corner somewhere, but this is something I hardly ever do. I normally just put it on anyway. But I put it on the smallest drawer <laughs> because that's what I was going to start with just in case. And I'm already disappointed. It already looks too orangey, but I'm trying not to think too much of it. So I just put it on there and I think I only left it for 60 seconds and it's just too orangey for me. So I let that one sit aside and I had this old standby that's just like a weathered look. It's just supposed to take the drawer and give it a more weathered look. It's probably better for like new popular wood that you've making a piece and you want to give it a more aged look. It's probably not good for this particular piece. And so when I took it off, I felt like, oh, this is not doing it for me. It looking back at it it's probably not as bad as the other one so i took a break from that let that dry before i can reprocess it and now i'm going to add a little antique gold gilding wax on there just to even out the look it's not quite even it's like two different colors going on and i do prefer a gold look than a copper look Honestly, I was struggling with both looks and I really wanted it like to be just black handles. I thought that would pop more, but I was trying to keep it as close to what the original one is as possible until I keep looking into it. I know I got some information about the handles, but I don't know if the handles is the same as the company that made the actual furniture because it made it seem like they were two different people like it was just a company that made handles so comparing the two that I did I did like the one that I polished up with the gold so I had to continue doing that and so the piece was never cleaned off after I did the sanding so now I have the actual dresser that I wanted to get all this dust off of it and so I can prepare it to actually get this other stain that I went and bought from Lowe's. So I went back to Lowe's and I bought more stuff. When it's time to stain a piece, it can get expensive if you're not sure about the wood, how the wood is going to take the stain. Very few times have I actually stained something and been happy with the first stain. Very few times I find myself running to the store or changing something like all the time. And so when I sand down the first drawer from the stain, I noticed it got brighter. So I went back and decided to stain the other two drawers to get it a little bit lighter. Like maybe I could have stained, I could have sanded more off of the drawers. Like they look like they were 
darker than the other ones just to try to brighten them up a little bit before I apply this next stain that I bought. So I rarely do this, but I pulled out my pre-stain conditioner <laughs> and it's water-based and I know the stain that I'm using is going to be water-based so it all kind of lines up. You spend so much money trying to do a lot of these projects and this one is for my home so I did explain that away like look, this is for you to keep. You got to make sure that you just get what you need to get this project done and so this wood conditioner it sits until it gets dry usually if it's in a well ventilated area you can start the stain in an hour it just depends on how big the piece is and how long it takes for it to get dry I did do the drawers first so they were able to get stained first it's mid wax and driftwood. I've never used the water based version. I always use the other one. So I'm shocked to see it looks like a muddy green. And it kind of freaked me out. Like this is a water based stain. It looks like it was thick like paint. And it looks green. But I'm like I'm sure it's what they said it is. It's in the color driftwood. So I take the smallest drawer again. And no I didn't test it a little bit. I just rubbed it all over the smallest drawer and I looked at it in, in directions and I it's been a long time since I've saw the greater than less than symbol but it said two minutes and the open side was under towards the two minutes so I just focus on the two minutes whether it's greater than or less than two minutes that was what I was thinking so I just start to apply to the small drawer and I did do a test because I mean look at it I was freaked out by it I didn't show the test online on here but I did put it on and then like 30 seconds later I rubbed a small piece just to see what it looked like so I put it on again and then I start working on another dresser drawer when I saw that it wasn't it wasn't like it wasn't going to stick too hard because I wanted to be able to see the grain. I wanted to be able to look good. I didn't want it to be too heavy because some stains are just kind of cover up too much. I want it to be more of a natural brown without having that orange in there. And there's different types of wood on the piece. The base is different. And I just wanted it to just show whatever it is. I wasn't going to concern myself with making everything the exact color. Because sometimes you'll have a piece and they use different wood for different parts of it. And then you're steady trying to like make it all the same. So now I'm putting the Midwex Polycritic. It's in clear matte. It has no gloss to it. It's like a sort of, it's a finished look though. It's not like unfinished. I would definitely take a matte over a gloss but satin is maybe my favorite but this is pretty good too and I might have should have laid the drawers down differently because this way it was more work and I probably got it better done when I actually put the camera down because <laughs> you have to watch everything You get to move quickly before it gets dry. So please stand by and it's a reminder of the before look. It's not in bad condition, but it definitely has some bumps and orangey looks. And this is the finished look. I have it upstairs in the extra bedroom and I think it looks great I would have loved if the handles were black but I just wanted to keep it authentic 
So let me know what you think.